Hello, you guys. I just want to make a normal video. I feel like I'm always rushed on these other platforms with a minute and a half. So I wanted to go more into detail uh, about this guy. Um, this is an albino K-Sat. So what this was is I had a, I had a swab of K-Sat, which is a Kosamoy super strain. And that is crossed with a true albino teacher. So you end up with this phenotype a lot when you when you do those types of crosses. I've done a lot of these crosses, and one of them is usually an albino, or maybe both of them are, alb are albinos. And you end up with this sort of uh, kind of generic albino phenotype. Um, a lot of people might be familiar with Jack Frost. That one's become very, very popular. Um, kind of like this. It, it goes white, and then it'll start to get soft. To be honest, if you want to get spores, get them now. I'm about to. That's why I'm making a video, because I'm about to get swabs from this so something like this right here is perfect for getting swabs um if you're gonna get clean non-bacterial swabs uh you you want to get them at like this stage uh if you let it go to where they're blue they'll start to the, the gills will get really soft and mushy and if you actually have a microscope um and you look under that microscope you will see lots of junk gill fragments and all kinds of like the bacteria which you might not be able to see unless you go up to a thousand x um, so this is the this is the stage when you want to get spores. So this is I'm gonna go probably make good thirty or forty swabs of this. And uh, again, this is not really stabilized. This is a clone. So what I did, I wanted to explain that a little bit too. This is basically a clone of uh, from a multi spore. So the multi spore KSAT, uh, which was essentially a spore swab, which I did the the grab and drag technique, which is on another one of my videos where I ripped off. I took a little piece of that swab and I just ripped it and did a little S pattern inside the agar. Well, when I make spawn from that, you can use what's, that's called the T0 plate. You can use that, but uh, oftentimes there'll be a little bit of contamination in there, maybe mm, some bacteria that's hiding. So what I normally do, I wish I had a plate, but I'll cut out like a little, maybe one inch square, like maybe a little bit longer, like an inch inch and a half by a by a half an inch and i will basically move that onto a second like the t1 plate you might call it so i'm still trying to get a few genetics on that plate and then i make uh, so that would be your t1 plate but it's not really it's it's multiple genetics so it's not yet a monoculture i would call it like a mixed monoculture so a mixed monoculture of dicarion so you could i guess call it a mixed dicarion too um, so anyway, you put that, that's so your T1 plate, you make spawn out of that, and then you fruit it. And when I fruit that, I have been getting a lot of albinos. I'd say like 50% of the time I, I do that procedure, I'll get an albino and something like this pops out. So whether you do, um, kind of, uh, whether you're doing basically like swabs or you're streaking swabs or you're doing MSS like the BRF, you know, old PF tech cakes. This is why if you listen to a lot of like old school ca cultivators, they'll be like, oh man, I still do multi-spore, like MSS, multi-spore syringes. Uh, or swabs if you do them the right way. Um, you can really, really pull out these genetics and get weird things. You got to be careful because you will end up with bacterial spawn and you will end up with like, you know, a lot of like failed attempts to make spawn and fruit. From that spawn where you've got mixed cultures, you might have a little bacteria in there. But again, you just kind of roll with it. And if you're doing pheno hunting um, and you're looking for new things, like multi-spore is the way to go. Because that's the only place um, you're going to get genetic diversity, right? If you're doing an LC, especially from an isolated genetic that has been run by other people and selected, you're going to get good You're going to get good yields. Um, that... that um, you should get good yields if you replicate the exact conditions which is typically monotubs you know like these guys and that's the way people grow now or bags or whatever that that isolate was selected for you should get a good yield now if you're going to change conditions you're going to go from bags to monotubs to shoe boxes or whatever you're going to have to go back to multi-spore and get something that suits that particular method of growing so that's exactly what I've done here. All of this work was done, uh, all this genetics work was done in shoeboxes. And here I have something that's fruiting quite well. I guess you'd call it a canopy in a shoebox. So if that's what you're going to run, that's what you should select for. I haven't quite woke up yet. Um, that's what you should select for. If you're going to run in monotubs, like select fruits and genetics that are going to work well in monotubs. Simple as that. This is what plant breeders have been doing for millennia, right? Thousands and thousands of years. 
you know, if you're growing in an arid region, you select crops that grow well in the arid regions. It's just like that simple. Um, so that's what, that's what I did. And obviously the results turned out pretty well. Now, if I took this same genetics and I cloned it, which I wouldn't need to, cause I already cloned it and I went to a monotub, it might not work so well, right? You know, it might not work so well. I'm trying to be here for the camera here. Who knows, but this works. So again, this is an albino case set. I forgot to write the albino cause it, it was going to be fairly obvious when it popped up. Uh, and this is it. So this is, uh, so you wouldn't call this stabilized necessarily, but I, I've heard, I just heard, uh, Munchausen talking about it, how, you know, once you get to the third generation of doing this multi-splore tier zero select clone, like do a sprint it, by the third generation, if you're still getting the same phenotype in the same conditions, um, you can probably be pretty, pretty uh, sure that it's like stabilized. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd give it a new name. Like I'm still calling this albino case at, right? This is, I'm not going to give it a new name quite yet, but as far as the home cultivator goes and, you know, maybe, um, you know, maybe the squirrels, uh, they might have a certain preference. And so you want to cater to that preference and, well, sorry about the light, you guys. It's like freaking out here. It looks like it's about to rain and storm. And so I need to sort this out and get out on my daily business. It's like midday here. So yeah, pretty one. You can see it's getting to be, um, it's getting a little bit of that blue coloration. Again, you guys, with the swabs, things that you should, I'm going to swab this literally right now. You can see it's still firm. Uh, I've checked these kind of guys under the microscope. I'll give it a real quick swipe on the edge of one of these gills just to make sure there's, just to make sure. I'll just take a cotton bud and get, give it a little real, a little quick swipe. Uh, and it should be ready. And then I'll just make a bunch of swaps. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, sorry, there's some tidbits in there. Sorry, it took me seven minutes, but I didn't really have a plan. I just wanted to show you some pretty mushrooms. <laughs> All right, see y'all later. Bye-bye.